Hello and welcome to module 5.5. So today we're looking at coherent integration, in particular something we call ideal coherent integration, which we'll explain, uh, and the effect on the signal to noise ratio, the SNR. So to give context, let's just put up on this slide the satellite block diagram uh, that we've seen before. And imagine the signal traveling down to Earth and being received in our receiver. And there's the receiver block diagram that we've seen before. And what we're going to focus on today is when that signal comes into our receiver, and remember that uh, we don't actually see it as this over here. There's noise on top of it, so it's, it's invisible at that stage. But then we correlate with our local copy of the code and then integrate. And it's this integration that we call coherent integration. It's the, the term coherent comes about from the fact that whatever phase changes occur in this chain uh, propagate coherently. So if this phase changes by 180 degrees, that propagates through, and the signal sign, S-I-G-N, will change by 180 degrees. So that's what makes it coherent integration. Um, we'll learn about non-coherent integration later. So anyway, for today's video, we're focusing on what happens when we integrate the signal and how fast this peak grows. OK, so now we're going to just look at that code in more detail. Uh, the way to think about this slide is imagine this is like a, an oscilloscope, and this signal here is moving from right to left on your scope, passing by some point where you're sampling it. And then uh, so we're, we're sampling at this point here. So we sample this point of the signal coming in. And for the moment, we imagine there's no noise on it at all. And we generate uh, our local copy of the PRN code. And, and this is all happening at discrete times. So, so un underlying this is this local copy. But at a certain point, we'd just be generating what we know the value would be, which would be either plus 1 or minus 1. At this stage, plus 1. So we generate our local copy uh, there and multiply it by what we've sampled and add it. So that in this case, would be plus 1 times plus 1 would be plus 1. And we'd, we'd get 1 coming out of the summer. And a little bit later, we'd sample again as the signal slid from right to left and multiply and add, and so on. And the, and the thing to take away from this slide is to notice that if we had our local copy perfectly aligned with the incoming signal, in other words, if this tau value was 0, we were perfectly aligned, then every local sample would locally generated value of the code would match with the sampled value perfectly. And the plus ones would align with the plus ones, the minus ones with the minus ones, and we'd we'd get ourselves a peak value it would be as high as we could possibly get. And any misalignment would mean that, that if, you, if you've got a slight misalignment, as we've shown here, then we'll get plus ones lining up with plus ones and minus ones lining up with minus ones. But notice, sometimes you'll get a minus one lining up with a plus one. And that's what gives us this value down the peak over here. And, and if we're misaligned by more than one chip of the PRN code, then there's a random mix of plus ones and minus ones, and we essentially get 0 off, off the peak there. And so that's the basic autocorrelation response of the pseudo-random noise code, the PRN code. So that's so the, the thing to take away from this slide is this, this idea of perfect alignment gives us the peak, and the misalignment of less than one chip gives us something proportionally down this triangle there. OK, so that's simple enough. Now we're going to say, well, what happens when we add noise? So we have the same noise-free signal, but plus noise on the right. And for the purpose of analysis, we're going to split up the noise from the signal. Now, in real life, of course, they're on, they're on top of each other. But it's perfectly uh, correct to split them up just for the purpose of analysis. So on the left, we've got things just as we had on the previous slide. And what we're going to look at now is, well, how does the signal grow with the number of samples that we take? Well. It's very simple. If we have n samples, then the output of this, when we are correctly aligned, is going to be n times bigger than if we had one sample. So uh, every time we add uh, something in this integrator, we just get another 1 coming out. And 
it adds up. And so that's clear if you're perfectly aligned, even if you misaligned, if you, if you had something like a thousand points coming out of this, you'd have a certain number match up, a certain number not match up, you get this point there. If you doubled it and you had 2000 points coming out of this, this triangle would just scale linearly. And that's clear from the simple nature uh, of that. So what about the noise? Well, in, in real life, the left and right are superimposed and the noise is right on top of the signal. So when we split it up for the purpose of analysis, we've got to replicate what's going on inside the receiver. And so there's this local copy of the PRN code and then the same thing is multiplying the noise. So at the current time, there's the sample of noise and just being multiplied by a plus one of local copy of the PRN code and added. And a little bit later, we'll multiply by either a plus one or minus one and so on. And so it really doesn't make much difference if we multiply the noise by plus one or minus one. If it's truly random noise, it's still random noise. And so the output of this integrator is just the sum of uncorrelated noise. And the, the standard result for uncorrelated noise is that the standard deviation, sigma, of the sum of n terms is the square root of n times the standard deviation of one sample. So the standard deviation grows as the square root of n. So now we can see what the gain is going to be of the signal and the noise together when we add up n number of terms. The signal grows by n, the noise grows by root n, and so the signal to noise ratio, which is defined as the power of the signal, which is proportional to n squared, over the power of the noise, which is proportional to the noise standard deviation squared, is just simply n squared over root n squared. So there we have it that the SNR, signal to noise ratio, grows as n. And that's the result we're looking for for the ideal coherent gain. Notice we've mentioned that up here. And so just remember that ideal doesn't mean there's no noise. It means that the noise itself is ideal. So what does ideal noise mean? It means it's uncorrelated in time, uncorrelated noise. Let's just clean everything else up and make that point that ideal coherent gain means that there's uncorrelated noise. Because in real life, this result may seem may not seem right. Because what this suggests is that if you just sampled more often, you could get more gain. And that's actually true to a point. But if you think about it, if you sampled very, very fast, if, we, if we, instead of having two samples per chip, as we've shown here, you had many, many more samples, intuitively you'd think that, well, if we sampled the signal and then very short time later sample it again, wouldn't we get almost exactly the same noise? And in real life, that would be true. Mathematically, if the noise truly were uncorrelated, that would not be true. But in real life, the noise is never purely uncorrelated, particularly in the receiver, because it's passed through a filter. So even if it was uncorrelated noise in the beginning, it becomes correlated with time as it passes through the filter. And so this this result of ideal coherent gain is just something we work with. And we will look at the losses from the ideal in the following video. But for now, that's a useful result to begin with. And the final slide today is just to show you how you can verify this result with a tool like MATLAB. And so what we've done here is just to take a, a MATLAB script and generate a correlation peak in the absence of noise. So here it is. There's the peak, it's just a triangle. And we've set it to a value of four units. And we've made some noise. You can generate noise in MATLAB just by, just by using this rand n function. And that generates uh, stand, it random numbers, normalized random numbers, that's what the n stands for. So it generates normalized random numbers with a standard deviation of 1. So when we add this together, we know that we've got a signal to noise ratio of 4 squared over 1 squared, which is 16. So we add them together, and that's what it looks like. If you look carefully, you can see that little peak hidden in the noise there. And then we, we do that again, and we get another little peak somewhat hidden in the noise there and so on. And so each of these, because you know the peak is there, you can kind of see it, even though in other places it looks like there's peaks there. And this is really what, what's going on in the receiver, is, is how do you tell the difference between these true peaks in the middle and these little false peaks, which are just noise? Well, you integrate, which means just add these together. And it's very clear to see what happens. Uh, we get this nice strong peak. And if you actually use MATLAB to and go and ask it, what is this peak value over the standard deviation of noise, the answer comes out. 64, which is exactly what we expect from our result. It's 
we've added together four noise terms, so we expect four times the original SNR value, which is exactly what you get. So that's all for today.